in the last video, we were investigating how much moisture, in terms of the absolute or specific humidity, can air hold at a given temperature. And we saw that if you go up in temperature, the air can hold more moisture and it'll have some curve. And we have this, this omega max that you can have. And what should follow now is to say, well, another interesting measure would be when I'm, when I'm got a certain amount of moisture in the air, I say I have this much moisture at this temperature, so this is 60 degrees Fahrenheit, and I'm at 0 0.03 for my omega. What is the percentage, or how close am I to this max? Where am I, 50%? Am I halfway? Am I 75%? And people actually do have this, and that's actually a very common thing to think about with terms of humidity in the air, and they call that relative humidity. And the key word here is that it's relative. So absolute humidity is absolute. If you give me mass of the water and you give me the mass of the air, I, I will always tell you the exact same answer. Now, if I have a state with a certain amount of water vapor in the air, and then I do nothing, I don't add water, I don't subtract out water, but I change the temperature that percentage of how close I am to this maximum level that I can get to will change. So for instance, I went from 60, I'm at the same level, say this was 50%, now I am only 20%, say, of the way there. And so the relative humidity changes when temperature changes. And so that's what makes it relative. But it's still a very useful thing. To, to gauge about our state of the air and HVAC. So let's get a little more formal about it. Relative humidity, we'll usually use this Greek letter phi, and we'll define it as the mass of the vapor divided by the mass of the vapor when we're saturated. And that is a pretty good way to go about it. And we're going to assume that we are ideal gas and so for both of these situations we know that at a particular pressure we'll say the pressure of the vapor volume of the vapor mass of the vapor r of the vapor and the temperature that holds and it also holds that the pressure of the vapor at saturation and the mass of the vapor at saturation r of the vapor this ideal gas relation also holds. We're saying it's ideal gas at all points, even close to saturation, and that's an interesting point as well. And just to go on an aside of that, you can you can justify that if you would look at say a TS diagram for water, and if you don't know what I'm talking about, you may want to go look up some other thermodynamic videos, but at below 50 degrees C, if you were looking at lines of constant enthalpy, at the, up here, they, they kind of curve down. But when you get to 50, even at the saturation, these lines of constant enthalpy are fairly flat. And so if we know that enthalpy is just a function of temperature, we it goes back and forth, we can say that that's an ideal gas. And so this ideal gas relation still holds even when we're at the saturation dome if we're at low enough temperatures. You start increasing the temperature, this may not necessarily hold, but it holds for us, so that's good. So we can rearrange both of these equations and solve for the mass. So we're gonna have a PV divided by the RT. So if we come over here, we have phi. For the top, we would have P vapor V divided by R vapor T. And on the bottom, we would have, do a different color, PV sat V divided by RVT. And if you notice, look, all of these are the same for both of these. 
our vapor is the same, T is the same, volume is the same. And so really that relative humidity comes down to what is the current partial pressure of the vapor over the partial pressure at saturation. So that's, let me get rid of that, that's one interesting result. We can also take this and we can go back and if we use our formula here for absolute humidity, we can derive some other interesting relations for relative humidity. So relative humidity times P vapor sat is equal to partial pressure of vapor. And so if everywhere, everywhere we see a PV, we replace, we can replace that with, with that, if you can imagine. So we could now just say, put that there and minus relative humidity. So if we're given a relative humidity, and we have a temperature we can get, we know this, if we're given a temperature, we can go to our table and we can get P saturation. We can calculate out what our absolute humidity is. And we can also figure out our relative humidity as a function of absolute humidity and temperature because the temperature will give us that saturation pressure and I just realized I ran out of space on my sheet so actually let me go ahead and we're going to delete all this out okay and so let's just rewrite what we had we had this relation times PV over P total minus PV. So let's salt, and we also had V is PV over PV sat. So let's rearrange this equation, solve for PV. So let's move this over to that side, and we'll, we'll just distribute through right away. I hope this doesn't go too fast for you. 0.622 partial pressure of vapor. We'll bring this guy to that side. So we have omega P total is equal to, and we'll, uh, we'll just undistribute this or gather terms. Hope you see that. I brought this term over to this side. And now we can just rearrange a little bit. Omega times P total divided by 0.622 plus omega. And so we know that relative humidity is this P vapor divided by the uh, vapor at saturation. And so now we know that this is this thing. This was PV. And we just need to divide this over on this side by PV sat. So total pressure we knew if you're given a omega and a temperature and you can go look up this saturation you can get out the relative humidity or the how close you are to being saturated at a given temperature but not an absolute measure of how much moisture is in the air. This can change even though the amount of moisture does not. So with that, I hope to see you in the next video.